All right, we're back with part two of DJing live in the session window in Ableton. So what I want to show you in this is basically how to set your effects up to mimic the way that a regular DJ mixer would work. So what I've done is we've got our audio one and audio two and as I click here you'll notice that I brought in uh, Ableton's EQ3 and I brought in a phaser and set it to a, a preset that, that I liked. And basically with the phaser I'm just going to use the ability to turn it on and off when I want to. And then of course in track 2 I did the identical same thing. So these are all separate. Now what I'm going to want to do now is I'm going to want to assign uh, a few of these to to different keys and knobs. So first thing I'll do is I'll go to my MIDI and I'll grab I'll, every time I, I click on this then I twist the knob and it will recognize the knob that I want to control it like so. And then with the phaser I'm just going to click over here on key click here and then I hit that key and that affects the phaser. Now now my first key on my keyboard is going to make that phaser go. And then I'll go over to Audio 2 and I'll assign the second key to that. And then I'll go over to MIDI and I'll assign three more knobs just like so. And I'm going to assign one more knob here to the crossfader and turn that off. So now I, I pretty much have complete control over the track just like a DJ mixer. Now it's important for you to know that you don't actually need to see the effect in order for it to to be working. For example you can see when I move this knob that it's working but at the same time I'm moving another knob and I'm affecting the EQ in audio one and if I switch over you'll see see there we go so and then here let me go ahead and turn this down and I'll see if I can give you a little example so I got my phaser on in audio one and just by hitting the key I can turn it on and off so dur during certain buildups or whatever I might want to drop the EQ and just like so. So that gives me a lot of capabilities there. Now another important thing to know, I typically like to turn my EQs all the way up. That way I don't have to worry about some middle point that I've got to meet in order for it to be at a normal level. So I set my volumes and set them up so that my, the volume of my track works with having these all the way up. Now if you play these you could actually do everything with your volumes with the EQ because if you turn an EQ all the way down it's off. Here, let me show you. So I'll play this. Out goes the lows. Out goes the mids. And now you got no volume at all and that's all done just with the EQ. So it's really easy to creep in a track. And if you warp your tracks right, you got the confidence that, uh, that your tracks are beat matched just, just fine. So that's a little bit about that. The next thing I want to show you, I want to go into a track. I want to show you how you can like live on the fly you can set loop points. That way if you decide that you want to keep a certain part going for a while uh, it's really easy to do. And the way that you would do that is now I believe you can set it up with your MIDI. So if you wanted to it's your loop position here. I could actually assign a key to that. So let's say I assign key three and four. Well it doesn't look like it wants to do that. 
but nonetheless, you could just uh, click on these and it'll set the, uh, the loop point. So let me go ahead and show you. And it's gonna drop the uh, it's gonna drop the loop right on the one, so it'll be good matched. And one, two, three, four. And now I've got that part looping over and over. And if I want to get out of that loop, I would just uh, reset the start position. Just like so. And now you're out, and it'll play the rest through until you uh, decide to either set an end loop or start loop again. So that's a really cool feature, and if your tracks are warped, you could go ahead and be pretty confident that it's going to give you perfect.